morning. All right, YouTube. Today I'm gonna play some four color blue shadow for an IQ coming up. <clears throat> Got the three denials, two battle rages, a grim flare, some terminates. Now I got my mana base stretched a little thin in this one. So I'm going to try this out. I'm going to try another version later that has the mana base that's a little bit more conservative. So I'm going to give that a whirl after. But first we're going to start with this one. See if I can deal with the stretched mana base. If it's too much, then I'll look to change it. I've got a denial, two delays, which I really liked, a snapcaster, and two last hopes to kind of grind with, as well as some brutalities. So... Without the white, I think we're going to have enough here to grind with. I play a Gorklan Rampager in my sideboard because I think when I want this effect, I want it very badly, like against humans. So I want to have a reliability to be able to traverse for it. So yeah, we're going to give this a whirl. Starting out. And uh, we're going to see where it goes from there. Oh, I need to go grab, grab my coffee. My wife never makes enough coffee, which is like a pretty big buzzkill. Nightbot's not working, so we might not have any music today. Okay, four color shadow blue. Guy's got 31 trophies. And these all have been like very recently. I'm actually going to move my mic. Oh, watch out. Things are getting weird. All right, just moved my mic over so that it wasn't in the way of my hand. Scooch this over. Things I want to find out today, I want to find out um, how good this Snapcaster Mage grind package is. If I need to cut these veils, which I might end up cutting these veils, because I don't think Liliana the Veil is very good right now. So I might just cut these entirely, play something like maybe another removal spell, um, a second flare, maybe a third battle rage, or play like Last Hopes in the main deck. So Last Hopes can at least buy me something back. So I might try that. But, because I've been very down on this card with since Bloodbright Elf and Magus Rider have become like really, really big. So, <clears throat> I also could add something like Lightning Bolt to this deck. I've also thought about maybe cutting these two grudges for a Braids, because they do a similar thing and they're also good against humans. And I'm expecting quite a bit of humans at this uh at this event here this weekend so i would like to play it first seems pretty good keep this <clears throat> i'm gonna go overgrown tomb into inquisition on one i don't want to use this traverse for lay of the land until i have to which would be next turn probably if i miss i could go breeding pool Okay, so we're playing against Burn. It's a pretty easy Swift Spear. I don't have a way to deal with it. It's probably going to deal me a bunch of damage throughout this game. <coughs> okay. Oh, no. He played the... Not that one. He suspended Rift Bolt. So the best draw would be a land. All right. Grim Flare is not a land. So just play my Swamp. And then pass the turn. So the best draw for us would probably be a fetch land so that <clears throat> I could play flare and shadow or play shadow and have stubborn denial up. Okay, so there's the Mesa. So we know three out of five cards. All right. So I really don't want to play this Searing Blaze, this into Searing Blaze. Searing Blaze puts me at 11. 
Yeah, I think I'm just going to wait. Have a pulled up Fatal Push. Because they're going to Helix me down to 11. And then if I draw a land, I can play Death Shadow and have Stubborn Denial up. So that's what we're going for here. Try to update my update information. Okay, that resolves. So we know our opponent, we know two out of the three cards my opponent has in their hand. So again, the Searing Blaze doesn't do anything to kill this shadow. <clears throat> I really need one more land. I think I'm going to need this Stubborn Denial to win this game. So that's a good sign. Okay, Eidolon's, Eidolon's annoying. Okay, so now we really need another land. If we find a land, we're in great shape. So there's the Tarn. So it's Blaze, Eidolon, X. Okay. Okay. So now he's just going to try to lock me with Eidolon next turn. But that's not really going to work. Wish I had drawn a land there so I could play Liliana. So now we're just going to slam this Tarmogoyf and hope that my opponent doesn't hit a burn spell here. Because they're going to chop the Death Shadow with their idol on and take five. Okay. So I'm actually just going to attack with one shadow so that I can beat a creature off the top. Why well, does it matter? I'm going to be able to beat a creature off the top anyways because of the fatal pushes. <coughs> I'd have to hope he doesn't draw a burn spell, basically. I'm not going to play the flare. Well, no, because both my creatures are lethal next turn anyways. So we're just going to cross our fingers and hope our opponent misses. We can beat a creature. We can beat, we can't beat Searing Blaze. We can't beat any bird spell. We can beat a creature. Oh, we got lucky. Okay, so it gets Burn. Want Stub. Brutalities and Delays. Don't want Snapcaster Mage. I would like to cut two Street Wraiths, two Inquisitions. And two veils. I'd like enough to interact early, but I'm actually going to bring in this rampager too. And because I don't have any three drops, I'm going to cut a land. Which lands don't matter as much? It's a little harder with my new build. Like the mana base is a little weird. So I've been cutting the second overgrown tomb to have two red sources so that I can, you know enable te terminate and teamer battle rage and the red cards in my deck it's gonna be a fetch land and it's probably a bloodstained mire as the blue lands are more important and this is only fetches one blue land uh, any other considerations I want to keep a couple street race for delirium I want to keep a couple thought seasons to enable death shadow so I think this is what we're gonna do here No land heater. Hoda Morgans as well. This hand's great. It's not great, but now it's great. So this is probably... This might go get me watery grave, to be honest. <clears throat> like, we might just be off the green plan. Yeah, I think we're just not going to fetch a green land. 
Nope, we're not going to cast that. <coughs> Each one of us went top, top. So no matter what, I'm going to be able to play two 1-1 one, one shadows next turn. So it should be... I, I definitely, I think I'm going to go get Watery Grave because I think we've got enough tools to win here. And if I draw a counter spell, I really want to be able to cast a counter spell. Wow. So now we don't even care if my opponent kills one of these. This is like the upper, I don't know, Bert, sometimes like, Bird enables your, you know, top whatever, 30% of draws or so sometimes. Okay, there's one out. Am I going to Rift Bolt one of these? Okay. Let's take a look. Do this before combat so that if they cast something, it grows both my shadows. And if they kill a shadow, then it's no big deal. Yeah, we're going to take Rift Bolt as it's the one that um, it's the one that can deal damage to the shadow. I really just want my opponent to kill me. Because if they if they fire off this Boros charm and then deal any damage to me, they're just dead. Just gonna keep chugging along for three. My opponent really has to just kill me in one turn sequence in order to win this game. Which they have enough lands to do. So I do need to like get something going on here. Cast that now in order to prompt a reaction. Weird game. Yeah, they just concede. All right, good way to start the morning. <coughs> oh, we're already in it. Okay. 1 0 in the first league. Okay, so we're playing as a Storm player. And this hand is okay against Storm. We're going to keep it. It's a little slow, but in game one, their deck's slower than it is after sideboarding. We definitely have to take a cost reducer. All right, Battle Rage is actually not bad. So let's go get Blood Crypt. So we have all our colors online. So they went bottom, bottom. And we're just gonna take the Remand to be able to push through my Liliana, hopefully. They're probably gonna opt on their main phase and look for a land. <coughs> nope, they missed, okay. So this can go get Breeding Pool. Sleight of Hand, that's what they drew. We're gonna let that go. I should have paused to play a little bit of a little bit of gamesmanship. Wow. All right, well, my opponent... I mean, this is what happens with Storm sometimes. All right, I'm casting this Liliana anyways, so... And I'm actually going to ditch... I'm just going to ditch a land to start. I might ditch the Battle Rage next turn, because Battle Rage plus Street Wraith is going to give me Delirium. Okay, so they ditch Grape Shot. Okay, they are still just digging. Okay, they found a land. 
Alright, that's a good draw. So let's cycle this first. We take a look. Alright, they just concede. Okay. <coughs> okay, so I want my delays, my snapcaster mages, my radiant flames. I want some number of all 10 of these cards. I don't know if I want exactly all 10. Uh, I know that a lot of these decks, I actually don't like Liliana of the Veil because they're, uh, they go, they're too fast for that if you're sideboard. I like, cutting, I like cutting a good amount of my removal in this matchup and then cutting a couple traverses. I might be over sideboarding a tad, but I know that like Liliana is too slow on the draw. They board out some, a lot of their creatures, um, but I've still got answers to like a couple of them. Yeah, we're gonna give this a whirl. Yeah. And we probably want the Rampager. I should always board the Rampager in, <coughs> in matchups like these. Probably don't need it. Uh, I'm gonna cut a Tongue of Life. <coughs> it's most likely our worst threat as uh, as they empty at least like Grim Flare makes it so they have to trade a lot of cards. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. We're already in the game two of the league. Game two of match two. We've only been up for 18 minutes. Modern moves quick. That's why I love this deck. It, it, like, it finishes games in a very few amount of turns. So I play pretty slow. So it makes it so like, I have enough time to like um, finish all of my lines of thought and all that stuff and take my time and not have to worry about the clock pretty much ever. Like, I usually lose or win in the first six turns. opponents thinking about I appreciate everyone already here this morning I hope y'all are having a good day <clears throat> just send them a test just to make sure I guess I can go back here and talk about this deck and like one thing change that I might make. So if I go back and look at this, something I totally could see happening is I'm really not happy with this card in the moment in this format. So I might end up putting these two last hopes into the main deck just to kind of hedge my grindy matchups because this card's so good against combo decks. And then stick like two surgical extractions in my sideboard. That's just something that I could see happening. Just not playing any Lilianas at all <coughs> and just playing these just playing like two last hopes in the main deck and then just having two surgicals just to hedge my fair matchups because the deck is so good against the unfair decks so but if i did that i would want to add like one ghost quarter in here because if i have these two if i have two surgicals i want that out to be able to like my draw to be able to traverse for a ghost quarter to surgical a charm land My opponent is still out here. But yeah, so how, how this deck is set up here, it used to only run one off fetch land. Oh, gross. 
They used to only want one run one non-black fetch land. When I say an off fetch land, that's what I mean. So, but because I have four red cards in my main deck and five red cards in my sideboarded, I really wanted another stopping ground or another red source. I decided to use a stopping ground. And the stopping ground still gets fetched by eight red sources. And the same thing with the breeding pool gets fetched by eight blue sources here or these eight fetch lands here. So instead of it being another overgrown tomb, which gets fetched by 12, I am stretching things a little bit. And something that I want to try here with another version of this deck later in my next league is I want to try it with just a forest to see if I can get away with playing one forest in the deck, which changes, which adds me one more non-fetchable land. So I've got like one, two, where's the overgrown tomb? So now I've got seven non-fetchable lands, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And to compensate for that, I cut one polluted delta, one blood stain mire as they're my off lands. And I added one wooded foothills that still fetches me a breeding pool it, the only thing it doesn't fetch is watery grave. So, you know, whether this mana base, it doesn't fetch swamp as well, but this wooded foothills is a hit on five of the seven of my fetch land, of my fetchable lands. So I want to give that a whirl in the next league. The 75s are the same, same deck except for the land base. So I just want to know if the land can, sir, lands can, uh, can whatever um, support it <coughs> and then my next version this is what I would play ultimately if I if I could is I would play this four color um, I would play death shadow white because I think it's just like the most consistent version of the deck the problem is you just lose so much game without the counter spells but I added some things to the sideboard to see if I could overcome that a little bit like, so we've got the three battle rage effects in the main deck. And then I've got this one claim fame, which is just kind of like a haste, kill you out of nowhere kind of card. So we have double grim flare. Like very, we're much more threat dense. Our removal's, you know, a little less diversified because we cut a fatal push, but it's just more linear. And then the sideboard, you've got like the white cards, the three brutalities. I cut an Ancient Grudge because you have, you know, Rampager and Battle Rage in the main deck. So I do, and then I got two Surgical Extractions and a Duress. And then the Ghost Quarter for, like, the Tron thing. Here, I would play Fulminator Mage, but Fulminator Mage is just so god-awful to traverse for. It's so slow. And it doesn't automatically win you the game. Like, most of the time, Ranger can, like, help win you the game. So it's worth it. But it's just, like, the, the Fulminator Mage is just not good. Um... And then I've obviously got like the old faithful five color shadow. <coughs> the five color shadow deck plays no, um, no terminate or no um, doesn't play any terminates because there's only I can only afford one red source with this mana base because if I if I fix my mana base here in order to incorporate like. Um, a stomping ground or something like that. It makes so then I have two, both of my splash colors can't be fetched in my basic. So it just makes the mana base way, like, too too bad. I could easily see this Fatal Push becoming a Dismember. <coughs> but I really do not like Dismember right now in the modern format. With humans being around and, like, more a few more interactive matchups, like Jund, going long, you just can't afford the light dip points, in, in my opinion. I also don't like how that you have to put a land in the sideboard for this deck. <clears throat> it just feels like you're getting robbed a little bit. Where's my other overgrown tomb? Right here. And you can't put the overgrown you can't put the Gala Shrine in here for like an overgrown tomb because then all of a sudden you just you only have two green sources in the entire deck. And you know that gets that gets you a little thin. <coughs> All right, I'm gonna go make some coffee while my opponent is tweaking out here a little bit.
No, well, thank death and taxes for the auto host. Okay, my opponent. <coughs> I think I'm gonna keep this hand. I have two redraws, two great cards in the matchup. So this hand's worth it. Battle Rage is very good. We're gonna be able to stop a quick empty here. So we just need a threat. I guess this hand's borderline. I could see Mulligan getting this hand. Man, my opponent is slow today. What are you trying to do, man? Turn one me here? All right, let's, that's good. Good draw, there's a green source. Okay, we didn't need that one. Okay, they're drawing a land. So I'm gonna be pretty aggressive with this Stubborn Denial as it's not turned on. There's no, you know, it doesn't have any, it doesn't have anything to pair with it. So <coughs> if you like, if my opponent does a cantrip here, I'm just gonna stub it. Okay, we're not gonna stub that one. All right, that's good enough to just cast. So this is gonna give me Breeding Pool as we've got two blue spells already in our hand. I love the old art on Breeding Pool. It's one of my favorite shock lands. Uh, Carbito Montez, thank you very much for the auto host. Baral, Manamorphos, Empty. I think I'm just going to take the Empty with this hand. Or I could take the Manamorphos. So my opponent plays Baral. Bing, bing. Goes up to three. Yeah, I think I'm just going to take the Manamorphos. They opt. Oh, shoot. I did my math wrong. They can just they can just gobble me next turn. Shoot. I just zoned out there. Early morning. Early morning lows. Yeah, so now it just goes brawl. Yep. That was uh yeah. Yeah, that was that was my fault. I just like zoned out there and forgot that this costs four. So I needed to take either this empty or this desperate ritual. Early in the morning, I don't have, I don't, I told you, my wife didn't make me enough coffee this morning. <coughs> All right, let's see if we can take this last one. Yeah, we'll keep this hand. We're not gonna fetch until after we cycle Street Wraith. Parma life. All right, great. So let's go get Blood Crypt. So we've got all our colors online. And then check out what our opponent's doing. So a hand like this, I think I just have to take Brawl because it's so redundant. <clears throat> What's going on here, Moto? You tweaking out on me, bud? All right, there we go. Okay, so they just have this Shivan Reef. If we draw a land next turn, I can play another Tarmogoyf and have a discard spell. Spiral Canal. Okay, land. Tilt. Um, I 
I wonder if I can actually race an MT. Because if they just go ritual, 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 empty, that's eight goblins. I can brutality one away. Then I can attack with my two Tomboys and have this four clan rampager going on here. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. It's ten goblins. I actually don't think I can race that. So I either hold up this delay or I get another Tomboy down. I think I'm going to play another Goyf. Like, I think it's important to just. My clock's not fast enough. The way it is. Like they're gonna find a way to get out of this. There's the island. <coughs> Don't play pieces of the puzzle. This is me being aggressive here. Like I've gotta just <coughs> I need to kill them. And I probably am not gonna tap out for the rest of the game. Like my best draw next turn would be a land. So that I can then Inquisition something like an instant to grow my Tarmogoyfs. <sighs> All right, here they go. Ascension. So they bolt in one other card. So their last card's bolt. So what are they gonna do? They're just gonna copy this bolt. They're gonna kill one of my goyfs. They're just gonna kill one of my Tarma Goyfs. This ascension's annoying though. This ascension puts me on notice here. Yeah, they're just gonna bolt kill a goyf. If they go upstairs at me, they're dead in two. Now they don't know that, but that is what, what they're doing here. They're putting themselves in a pretty tough position where they don't have anything going on. They're, they're debating now if they should bolt my Tarmogoyf or bolt me. I think they have to kill a Tarmogoyf. That's a five turn clock on, on, the, on the surface. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, they've decided to do this. They probably have to bolt this and this. Uh, Nightbot is just... I was going to have music today, but Nightbot is just, like, losing its mind. What's going on here with the chat? I can't see. You guys are chatting to me, but I can't see. I can see the chat when I look on my OBS, but I can't see the chat. Well, that's weird. Let me refresh this. Oh, the chat was quiet this morning, but I can't see it on my, on my, uh, on my Twitch. That's weird. Wow, so they just like went nuts and they didn't do anything. And we're just gonna pass, hold up delay. We're probably gonna delay like a, a draw spell. Parmesan. So if I just delay this, they die. Well, actually, unnecessarily, because I wanna delay one of these lightning bolt copies. 
So I need to draw a land in order to do that. Okay. So oddly, it's going to give them an out to bolt me here. And one of the bolts is going to resolve. So let me get a swamp. I need to make sure I have green, red. So green, I need green, red, and blue. So green. So this is Gore Clan Rampager mana. Oh, we don't even die to bolt. This is gas. And that's delay mana. So Gore Clan Rampager, delay. All right, we are good here. And then we'll just rampage or whichever one he doesn't block he blocks and then we'll just delay one of the lightning bolt triggers all right let's let the trigger resolve <clears throat> And that's how good this matchup is. I, I, I like tossed game one, but still I'm going to game two, it's, it's still I'm just going to handily win this match. So what's going on with this trigger, man? My opponent's so slow. I hate people that are slow. I play slow, so it happens to the best of us. Come on. I should have just countered this lightning bolt. It's full of a bunch of stupid questions, Johnny. This is so frustrating. Like, what? Give me back priority. <sighs> I'm going to go grab my coffee while they wait here. Just give me back priority. So I can win. Damn it. A hot dog is not a sandwich. Anyone that thinks it's a sandwich is a, is a moron. Come on. Well, I'm glad that everybody that's watching this gets to have a riveting experience here of this fast-paced magic. Delay this copy because it won't come back. <coughs> All 
All right. Hopefully he wasn't like trying to troll me with like, oh, I'm gonna wait and then hopefully he misclicks this because he probably has interaction for this. <coughs> Johnny, if you pay me $12 and give me back my 12 tickets that you owe me, then I will play Blue Moon at some point today, probably after, because I'm gonna stream tonight too, probably after I finish playing these four Death Shadow decks and hang, hang them around my list. Yeah, this hand's very good. It's gonna kinda suck for playing humans, but we have access to a turn two shadow if we, need, if we want it, so. Hmm. Today's 50 years since Martin Luther King was killed. I have your tickets, you never got them. Yeah, well, one day. One day I'll, I'll, I'll get them. It'll happen. <coughs> All right, Mountain. That's odd. I'm gonna... I only have one basic in this list, so I'm just gonna get Overgrown Tomb with this. No, I'm gonna get Watery Grave, excuse me. <coughs> Not gonna cycle this Street Wraith, just in case we're playing against Burn. All right, so we're playing against Blue Moon. No, we're playing against the, whatever it is, deck. The, um, the Through the Breach deck. This should be a pretty solid matchup for this deck. I should have done this. This is the wrong order here. Yeah. I'd miss sequence this pretty, pretty bad. So I'm going to get a Blood Crypt and get a Death Shadow down. The Spell Snare doesn't do anything. I kind of just want to take this Emrakul so that they're two pieces away from killing me. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Shuffle, sure. Get them before they turn into standard. Blood Moon. Nope. Sweet. Oh, that's, here comes another Death Shadow. What do they got covered here? Blood Moon off the top. All right, I think we can actually just get enough pressure on the board where we can kill our opponent. Even if, if they tap out to Moon us, then I think they're gonna die. It's gonna suck if I get remanded here because I don't have another blue green source. But now it's like, whatever, dude, moon me. We might draw a stub. Oh, Ric Flair. So I know four out of the five cards I have. There's a lighthouse. There's the moon. So they need, they basically need perfects. They need to draw Emrakul and have through the breach or vice versa or have cryptic command not to die. Yep. That's why like everyone always asks me like, oh, hey, how do you beat Blood Moon out of these Death Shadow decks? And I'm like, if you're on the play and they take a turn off to Blood Moon you, they're dead. Uh, I'm not in love with this card because I like all of these. I don't like my pushes.
I'm not in love with Battle Rage. I do like Battle Rage because we can cast it under Moon, which is nice. I can also cut a Traverse. I think I'm going to cut two Traverses. No, I'm going to cut a Traverse. I'm going to leave one in. Well, with 17, with no three drops in the deck, I actually can probably just cut a land. My worst fetch land in this matchup is Bloodstained Mire because fetching the red cards isn't as important. <coughs> All right, this hand's okay. We're gonna keep it. Because this deck just, these decks always just struggle to kill Tarmogoyf. All right, we don't need to do that anymore. I kept in my Terminate some Medi case because sometimes they play like a young Pyromancer game. My opponent taps out for like a search res content. I'm probably just going to stubborn denial it. This makes me think they have another cantrip or a spell snare, which is going to kind of suck. So I might hold back on my Tarmogoyf in the top top, <clears throat> which is not good for the home team. <clears throat> I'm not going to play into this Spell Snare, which is exactly what this is. And if they Spell Snare me, then untap and Blood Moon me, I'm probably dead. What is this? What are they waiting on? So I could just play Death Shadow. But I think I would rather just get this, try to land this Goyf. Here comes incoming counter spell of some sorts. Yeah, sure. Next turn I'll go Threat Threat. If my opponent has land blood moon, I'm gonna be a little little sad. I could have stubbed that, but I think Blood Moon or Jace are just like such high priorities. Yeah, we're gonna just get that out of here. I guess I could have No, nah, I should have let that resolve because I could have just terminated the thing. And now I'm pretty naked to whatever it is. Um through the breach emercool. Yeah, that was stupid. Well, now I'm not naked to it. All right, so they do have a Jace. So now I'm in a little bit of trouble because they're gonna play. They're gonna Jace. <clears throat> so I'll just get breeding pool. Yeah, I should have just let I should have let that resolve and then terminated it. That was a mistake. That was a punt. Because here comes Jace. Jace bounces my goyf. Or at least it should. Yeah. Alright, well at least now I can get down Jace and Shadow. Or I can get down Goyth and Shadow. Good coffee. I love coffee. So now I kind of have to brainstorm. I think. I don't really see a good way to get out of this with what's on board. Yeah. 
And they have draws to get them out of this, but as it stands on the board, we're going to be able to handle this Jace. We can handle it through like a P and like P and K would be probably one of their better draws. So I don't, I doubt this Spell Pierce is still in their deck. If I had to guess, this Pierce is gone. I don't know what my opponent does here. They might actually just be dead on the table. <coughs> yeah, because this is going to put an artifact into the graveyard. So now I just terminate this. At the end of the turn, taking damage. They might be dead. If, they, if I draw like a Street Wraith, they're definitely dead. Oh, I can't terminate end of turn, which is kind of a tilt because of this. So, yeah, they're dead. This is why I like these. I like the blue red. I like the blue red matchup a lot as a Death Shadow player. They just don't have any cards that like kill you they kill their creatures and if you uh as long as you can like i don't know the right way to say this as long as you don't get got by blood moon or get got by madcap experiment you're in good shape we'll attack him with both and then we'll just battle rage this one and this is where the double red has helped and just get out of the game it's because you get in there like a stir fry that makes zero sense it's also just one of the few one of the many decks in this modern format that just can't be battle rage they don't they can't they can't kill your creatures and if you can't kill death shadows creatures then you're going to die So, good morning, everybody. You got 18 people watching me this morning. I'm glad you're all here. Um, my name is Dylan Hubby. I'm a part of the Card Hoarder Network. If you guys like the stream, please hit the follow button. If you guys want to support me even more, go over to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's linked right below. I archive all of my streams, including all four decks, maybe five that I'll play today. Um, all five. All five. There'll be five YouTube videos today. I always put them there. You should check out Card Hoarder as they're the best bot chain in the business. Their podcast, what they do in the community is great. Gamer Craze is another great store in Northeast New York. Their Crystal Commerce is linked below. They have a cheap buy and sell system to foster a college environment. And if you guys want to just interact with me on Magic, check me out on Twitter. That's where I like to talk about Magic, and that's that's just that's my favorite social media platform. So we'll come back here while we're waiting. Hey, yeah, you, you know not to do that. Plus, chat, all of your, all of your subscription and donation money go to improving the life of Philberg, the cutest dog on Twitch. Move over, Brian Kibler. I am coming for you. Philly, do we want to play first? Yes, we do, Dad. What do you think of this hand, buddy? Well, Dad, it doesn't really have a threat, but besides that, I like it. We have some interaction. Probably cycle street rate first. Okay, yeah, you got it, bud. I agree. I like I like where your head's at, buddy. Alright, Phil Bird, we're cycling. Oh, we're going we're going off. Okay, so we're gonna actually oh, alright, you you like no, I've had enough, Dad. We're going to start off with the Swamp because this is... Well, this doesn't even get me Breeding Pool, so I should have fetched. <coughs> All right, we picked the wrong opponent to lose a lot of life against. I think I'm actually going to take this Swift Spear because this Swift Spear trades with Tarmogoyf effectively with the Searing Blaze. It's hot in here. 
And if you subscribe to the stream, you do get the greatest app on Twitch here. The Philly. The Philly app. So just play Sacred Foundry Tapped. All right, that's not bad. But this is going to be its stomping ground. And it's going to let us get our Garmatoy from play. We're in a tough spot. We're probably going to need one more land. We're going to need a Breeding Pool or, or a Watery Grave probably win this game. But we do have some tools. My opponent's hand's pretty weak. Like... Our target is going to be clocking for four turns starting next turn, and I do have creatures covered. I appreciate it, Johnny. I appreciate it. Okay, so there's the vantage. Okay. So I'm actually gonna stubborn denial this skull crack. Or what is this? So I'm gonna take three damage to stubborn denial, whatever my opponent does. Because if I don't take the three damage, then I'm gonna take four damage from my fetch land. So taking three to stub something basically makes my fetch land free. <coughs> so I'm tempted to take the lava spike because it's their most efficient. Like they go like Boros Charm, Untap, Skull Crack, Lava Spike. I'm going to take Spike because it's efficient. It, I lose one point of damage from my Goyf, but I don't want them to be able to like double spell. I can win this game if they don't double spell. But if they cast two spells a turn, I'm going to lose. This saves me one point. This this effectively saves me two points of damage right here, because it makes my fetch land free, and <clears throat> it cuts off one damage after this. We're a little punished. My opponent plays like a goblin guide here, but if my opponent doesn't play a goblin guide, then the only way they're going to be able to interact with me for the rest of the game is on the stack. Which is something that I can fight. <coughs> Nightmare scenarios, they go like bolt my Tarmogoyf, Searing Blaze my Tarmogoyf, and then I'm probably in a lot of trouble. So there's the Mire. Eidolon is not actually bad because it's going to grow my Tarmogoyf. Gas. So now we get the old 5-6 big boy coming in. And again, this is why we took Lava Spike. Because it leaves them with a very awkward turn here. They can't really do anything. And now, once I play this Death Shadow, they're not going to be able to do any damage to me. Because as soon as they snap off a Burn Spell, then they're dead. So basically, the only way that they win this game is they draw exactly a land next turn. Because at the end of turn, they can go double, double Searing Blaze into... Um, into skull crack, but if they draw a land and then we attack them for ten, if it's a fetch land, then they're dead also. So that's why it's just really important against burn to get rid of their like, make it so they can't double spell against death shadow. If burn can't double spell against death shadow and has to pace themselves. They're gonna lose, which is more than likely what's gonna happen here, because fetch land breaks up their plays, shock land breaks up their plays. Um, that's kind of it though. 
<coughs> like a stir fry. I don't think that's how you still stir, Johnny. And now we just lighten. We we hit this and we hit them down to two. And if we draw any land, if we draw any way to deal damage to ourselves, we win. A traverse counts. All right. Well, that's not a way to do damage. So now my opponent, my opponent doesn't have any outs unless they get a natural untapped land next turn because they go like, they have to fetch to deal me damage here and then they need to cast two more spells and they need to make a land drop. So what they just should do is they should Searing Blaze me here. I don't know why I played this, it didn't really matter. They should Searing Blaze me and then hope to draw either a lightning bolt, lava spike, or a basic land. If they skull crack me, they're dead. They have searing blaze. Yep. So that's step one. So untap land, they kill me. But that's it. Untap land or one mana burn spell, they kill me. And that's the clinic. So I'm going to sideboard the same way that I did last time. Cut a land. Um, which land did I cut after the last game? I don't really remember. I'm gonna cut Bloodstained Mire. I think the blue spells are more important than the red spells. Look at this, we're playing for the old 4 0. God, I love coffee. My life just would cease to function if I didn't have coffee. Oh, it's someone's birthday today. I thought they were my age or you're younger. This hand's gas. Discard spell, into removal spell, counter spell, and the man, the myth, the legend. The shadow. All right, that's kind of annoying. Double palm. So I kind of have to take a deflecting palm and stub the next palm in order to win. Though I'm going to have to play through an idle line, which is going to kind of blow. If we draw a team or battle rage, I should win this game going away. If I don't draw a team or battle rage, I'm probably in a lot of trouble. Well, that's a great draw. Okay, gonna take this lightning helix and then play a polluted delta. <coughs> I don't really know. It's kind of an odd question. Okay, so we knew about that one. Now I can fetch shock and make my, so two, four, six, seven. Now I gotta let this go. I'm gonna find myself idle unlocked pretty quick here. Like I'm dead to a spell off the top for my opponent. So maybe I had to kill this Eidolon. 
I always think that Eidolon's not going to be as bad as it always is. But it turns out it's always bad. Yeah, so like that spell just kills me. Yeah. Should've taken the idol on. <coughs> yep. That was my fault. I just tossed that one. I'll run it back the same. Yeah, should have should have taken the Eidolon. I always underestimate Eidolon. Because, like, sometimes Eidolon enables, like, my really silly draws. And then sometimes it just, like, kills me. It's either, the, like, useless or great. Um, so we got one, two, three, four. So we're going to keep this. I'm going to go get Watery Grave with my first land. Actually, I'm going to get Blood Crypt. So like next turn, I can go breeding pool and have all my colors online. Mountain off the top. All right, so this is gonna be tough. So how do I break up an efficient turn for my opponent? How I break up an efficient turn is I take one of these one drops. Because if I take Eidolon, they just go one drop, one drop, one drop. So I'm going to take Goblin Guide. This is just more damage off the immediately. Okay, that's a great draw. Yep. Mountain, Swift Spear, Bobble. Okay, they have another land coming off the top. Breeding pool, fetch shock, breeding pool 11. Go get a street wraith. Play this, block here. They bolt me. Oh, that's not good. So I'm gonna, they're gonna have the option to lightning bolt my death shadow. But then they're not idoloning me. So I'm actually just gonna go fetch watery grave. Play shadow. Hold this up. If they go to if they put idol on the stack, I'll just push this. And they're, we know they're drawing a land, so they only have two spells. No, I think Eidolon's actually the worst take, Druk 2, because it allows them to go Swift Spear into Lightning Bolt, Goblin Guide. It allows their most efficient turn. <clears throat> now they have to either go Lightning Bolt and not play another land, or they have Eidolon. I did just lose to Eidolon last game, but this game doesn't look like a game we're going to lose to Eidolon. So, hit this. They got a bolt. I go to six. I take four damage. Go to seven. Traverse for another shadow. We're looking for a counter spell. So they play the inspiring vantage. So they're drawing a swift spear. Okay. So swift spear plus lightning bolt puts me to two. And then any spell off the top kills me. So I don't think I actually want to attack. I think I want to just traverse for another shadow. And I can't kill them on the way back. Because it's only I only deal six with this. Okay, traverse is nice because that's gonna find me a Gore Clan Rampager. Though I'm going to need another um, 
I'm going to need another green source in order to traverse for the rampager. <clears throat> okay, so there that is. So I'm going to attack. And then just traverse for I'm not going to fetch because I don't want to die. Like, we know their hand. The only way that I die next turn is if they rip a Boros Charm. But I'm just going to traverse now, which kind of puts my opponent on notice. But it also makes it so that I don't have to crack this land and do it next turn. <clears throat> I could get another shadow, but if they draw a lightning bolt and they can just block and if they draw a lightning bolt, they can just block and they get another draw step. I think this limits their draw steps pretty significantly. Because now I kill my opponent without having them have to fetch, pro providing they don't draw either Path to Exile or deflecting palm off the top. Okay, so now we can cycle into a stubborn denial if we need to, but we're just gonna go for it here. And we're gonna rampage or the one that he blocks. And then just hope he doesn't have it. And if he does, we get a draw step at it. Ten, sixteen, minus two. I guess he can actually. So if he bolts me, no, he doesn't, because he gets the prowess trigger. If he bolts me, so now I have to think of how to like play around the most things here. <coughs> and it might be worth just saying okay, and having the only card that he can draw that kills me is um now if he bolts me then this just grows and it kills him anyways so he's got to bolt a shadow philly hey so he bits this that resolves i fetch because now he doesn't, he still deflect, we still lose to the same things. Because this is 17 minus 3 is 14. Or 18 minus 3. Yep. Here we go. Let me go check on my dog. Give me one second. <coughs> Phil. Hey. All right, let's get back. Let's go for the 5-0, holy shnikes. Let's get some 5-0 hype. I'm excited. Philly, what do you think about the 5-0, bud? You know, Dad, it would be nice. It would be nice. If you 5 0 do I get a treat? Maybe. Grab some more coffee. <coughs> and playing against Bird is difficult because, like, you have to evaluate what Eidolon's going to do to you, I think. Because, like, in that game, Eidolon won us the game because it enabled me to do extra damage to myself without having to take, like, three in increments of two, which left me off a lightning bolt, the lightning bolt pace. So, like, that game, Eidolon did nothing. The game before, Eidolon killed me. So that's why playing against Burn is, like, a lot of fun, and it's really difficult. Because, like... Things can change. 
things, I don't know exactly how to say this, things change and you have to be able to evaluate each game differently. There's no real heuristics. <clears throat> I have not been, I've, I haven't kept this card in in a matchup this entire league. I don't even remember what I played against. I played against Burn twice, Storm once, Burn twice, storm once, and then some other not interactive thing, I think. Blue red, blue red control. Yeah. I used to hate playing against burn until I played this until I played Shadow. And I'm like, okay, I like playing against Blur. Okay, we're on the draw. The old seven spell heater. <coughs> All right, we'll keep this. We're looking for interaction. That's not interaction. Probably got to run into humans and then get molly whopped here. Tron. Yes. I love playing against Tron. All right, so we're going to get Blood Crypt. Pray to God we hit a discard spell. Nope, tilt. And this is just a bad matchup. Like playing against Tron. Oh, we're playing against Eldrazi Tron. Thank God. Oh my God, they're playing the, the terrible Tron deck. I think this deck's god awful. <coughs> the Stomping Ground into Tarmogoyf. Next turn. We play um, Goyf, Death Shadow. I'm going to take damage from this Matter of Shaper. Okay, Thought Not Seer is annoying, but our deck's just bigger than his is. He should probably take my Death Shadow because, like, Liliana is an easy card to deal with from my opponent because you just sack the Matter of Shaper. Yeah, that's a good play. We're just going to take this. I don't want to trade these. There are draws that leave us dead here. That's a good draw. So let's check out what we are drawing. I would I would play against Eldrazi Tron all day. I think you are just like absolutely super favored. I should have done that on my opponent's turn. So that... I could potentially hit a, whatever it is, a fatal push. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this now to give myself the option to hit fatal push because putting an instant in my graveyard grows the time life. So if I fatal push this thought nuts here, then it still effectively draws me a card. Okay. That's a good draw. So all of these Eldrazi decks, the reason why they're good is that they play under constant creatures with enough disruption to hold down the fort. What do we get here? Reality Smasher? Okay, it's not a thought I'd say. That's fine. Um, they play enough pressure with their under cost of creatures to win the game. Now, what they don't do is they don't play creatures that are larger than, than uh, Death Shadows creatures. I'm going to trade with a Thought Nuts here if they attack. We don't even get blown out by a Dismember here because it grows Tarn of Life. So this is just like a very dumb attack for my opponent. Okay, we drew Battle Rage. So they could dismember now, and or now they can't dismember. Yeah, see now we're like, now we're in great shape. <clears throat> Play this, shock myself. This is two, four, six, five. I actually think I'm gonna abrupt decay this because I don't want my opponent to be able to search for another Tron land, and I really don't want to replicate this Matter Reshaper. And this is going to grow Tarmogoyf to be a 4-5. What kind of shaper? I'm not in very good shape. I'm in better shape since I've been walking a lot with my uh, puppy, but I'm not in very good shape, to tell you the truth. Not like I used to be. Sanctum of Eugene, so here comes 6 mana. 
Six mana for an Eldrazi. Chalice on one, sweet. I'm in the game. I'm in pretty good shape right now. Like, they can't, if I draw a fetch land, then they have, they're in the abyss for the rest of the game. I have the two largest creatures on the board. I'm worried about like an all is dust. Yeah, so now if they don't block, they're dead. So 20, 16. They actually have to block both creatures if they die now. Because if they block here, this becomes 20 minus 4 is 16 plus 4 is 20. So they have to go chump chump in order to not die. Yeah. And it's just that easy, boys. Ooh, do I have another land? I have an overgrown tomb. Sweet. You got a walking blister. And they don't kill your creatures. Like, this is another deck in Modern <clears throat> that lies in the I do not kill Death Shadows creatures very well. And if I do not kill Death Shadows creatures, I'm going to lose. Okay, so this is kind of a tough deck to sideboard against. I don't really like Stubborn Denial. But I do kind of like delay, as delay can hit like the creatures. <coughs> I like cutting on some traverses because they bring in graveyard hate. I kind of just want to do this for this. So we've got one, two, three, four. We have four ways to deal with a chalice on one, and including four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve discard spells. 12 discard spells. I don't want Snapcaster. I don't want any of these cards. So we're just going to submit. Yeah, so if you're a Death Shadow player, you're just like, your ace is against this deck. This hand's very good. As long as my opponent doesn't have two chalices, this hand's very good. If they have two chalices, this game's going to get difficult. It is kind of awkward that we drew the breeding pool. The off fetch lands are just the absolute worst to draw every single time. Okay. So we don't care about Hang Black Walker. We do care about All is Dust and Eugene. So we're going to take All is Dust and Eugene. We'll probably take Hanger Back Walker with an Inquisition next turn. <clears throat> hey, Dark Throne, how you doing? So I drew a tower. So they got, they got the old Teddy Tronskys rolled up. Do I want to play Tarmogoyf? No, Tarmogoyf doesn't do anything because of the relic. So I'm going to take, I guess we're going to take relic actually. Keep my graveyard intact. We can battle rage over this hanger back walker. Yeah. <coughs> what do you think about you and BY, Eldrazi, and Taxes? I think that the best Eldrazi and Taxes deck is the one that can play more Mirror and Crusaders. That's what I think. Whichever one, whichever build enables you to play the most Mirror and Crusaders you can, I think that's the best one. So we want to draw a land so that we can go like Thought sees Eugene. Ooh, is this a Thought Not Seer? This is a Thought Not Seer. It's a Hanger Back Walker for two. Okay. What is this? Why didn't they just Hanger Back Walker for three? I don't understand. Do they have like a Warping Whale? Warping Whale would suck. This is a Warping Whale. It's exactly what this is. No, it's a Dismember. Okay. Whatever. Did this in the wrong order. Poor sequencing on my part. Smasher. Okay. So we're going to get smashed here. Go down to two. Go down to four. Terminate's a bad draw because it's breeding pool. Because Warping Whale would counter my thought sees Johnny. And they, then they would land Eugene. That's an that's an awkward thought. That's an awkward one to hit. 
because it lets me fatal push this hanger back walker. <coughs> I don't have a catchphrase, I'm not that cool. Okay, so let me think. Five, four, they have this dismember. I'm gonna just push this because I think that I'm gonna need a couple turns here. Like, I, I want them to kind of chip shot me, but I don't, with this dismember, it might take me two or three attack phases to win this game. Mindstone, you got it, dude. So, my opponent's gonna dismember this, make this a 2 2. I'll block here, cycle these two, this two damage, two damage plus four. Might be in a tough spot here. I have to think about this dismember because this dismember matters. Okay, so if I block, they shrink this to make this a 2-2, two -two. okay? They shrink to make this a 2-2. Two -two. Oh, Professor French, French, thank you very much for the, uh, for the host. I appreciate that. Everyone coming over from Professor French, his stream. I appreciate you guys being here. My name's Dylan Hubby, so I'm in a tough spot here. So if I block the Reality Smasher, my opponent dismembers it, making it a 2-2. Two -two. If they assign all five damage to it, then my Death Shadow... Hey, take it easy, Professor Finch. So I'm going to gain two from this anyways to make my Death Shadow a 4-4. Four, four. Six. I go to four. Six damage here. If I cycle, I go to four. And then... They have to assign the Death Shadow all the damage here in order for me not to die. But I have to block. So if my opponent does this right, I think I'm dead. But if my opponent doesn't do this right, then I'm in good shape. Like if they do this after combat's over, then I should win the game. They have to do this before combat damage because my death shadow is going to get too large. Okay, so that resolves. So let's think here. My de this is going to grow. Puts one onto me, three. I'm going to cycle. I think if they do this right, I die anyways. But my death shadow dies anyways. Because if they assign five to it, no, they won't die because if they assign five damage to it, And we should be able to kill them with a battle rage next turn. Yeah. Got him. First league of the day. Gonna start off with a good old 5-0. Unless he's got another dismember. Hanger back wall. Oh man, that sucks. The walking ballista for the ultimate for the tilt. <clears throat> okay, so let's go. Jump back into it here. That was close. I think we're just going to leave it the way it is. And run it back. Oh, that was so close. They didn't have the bliss that we had him. Because then we just cracked him for 22. Alright, this hand's pretty good. We need a threat. But besides that, it's got a little bit of everything we want. We're going to be able to do the uh, the Street Wraith trick here, where we look at our top card. We can actually beat, and I love it when my, my opponent mulligans. 
Yeah, they had what they needed. I mean, like certainly we're four zero in this league. Like we have we have had it all at some point. Tarmogoyf. That is a threat, so we do want Tarmogoyf. This is going to get us Watery Grave. And we're, we're going to aggressively take a Relic of Progenitus here. And put a card on top. So I'm assuming they have lands on top. So okay, we're just going to take this Relic and we're going to look to just get underneath all of this stuff. Land a big Tarmogoyf next turn. We can even fight through like a worm coil engine with how our hand is. <clears throat> yeah, that's a great draw. You get this big boy in play. That's something that I think you should be, if you're playing Death Shadow, whether it's Grixis or Jund, you should aggressively take decks like these. You should take their relics because it's really important for you to, that sucks. Okay, so I'm gonna thought seize them. <coughs> so which one's worse and which one grows Tarmogoyf neither grow Tarmogoyf Eugene Eugene grows Tarmogoyf so five it makes it a three turn clock so I'm going to take Eugene because I think I'm going to get I think I'm just going to kill them before they get anything else down here that's the plan just to make this an even five ten dead Wow, they drew a card? That is aggressive. Okay. So I'm just gonna fire half the fire off the first half of grudge on that, I think. Well, I'm actually just gonna terminate it. Because I'd like to hold ancient grudge for the back half of <clears throat> for this worm coil engine if they get there which it appears they're not going to yeah we're just going to attack uh, we kill our opponent not through a dismember because they go to one because they take four life this is poor sequencing I should have played my land all right, there we go. <coughs> That's a great way to start the morning off.